What's up YouTube? So today we are discussing the subject of using the method of sponge float plastering on a two coat system. So on the walls that we've got here, what we're going to do is we're going to apply two coats of plaster and then we're going to look at using the sponge float method to help us get a better finish. And so what we'll do is we'll just put these walls on. Again, it's the, it's the same method as we always do when applying two coats of plaster. So apply the first coat, flatten it, let it pull in, and then apply the second coat. And at that point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick the video back up, and then we will discuss the reasons why you might wanna consider using the sponge float, what the pros and the cons are, and also the finish that you receive at the end. What we'll do is we'll also run a timer on my watch so that you've got a rough idea of, of the timings when using this method of plastering. So we'll catch up once I've put the uh, two coats of plaster on these walls. Okay, so we are now at the point where we're gonna sponge float this wall. Now, at uh, the point where we're at, what we've done is we've put our first and our second coat on and we've flattened it and we've just left it uh, enough time to pull in. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna apply a light haze of water over this wall. Now what we're using here is we're using one of the hose locks. This is the five litre one, something like that. Um, I couldn't recommend either the, the five or the seven litre um, any smaller than that and you'll be filling it up. It takes ages to apply so you really want one with a boom on it. And on pretty much the finest setting that it has on the nose and just give it, give the wall a light haze. So you want to apply enough water to the wall so it's staying on the wall as opposed to immediately being sucked in. So if you leave it too long, it will immediately suck in and it will have little to no effect. So you can see if I was to show the camera, you can see that there is water on the surface of the wall. Now what we're going to do now, is it's like a float, so the one I personally prefer to use is the Rafina. So it's the Rafina Medium Soft, I think it is. Um, you can get the, the larger one, the smaller one. Personally, I actually think I prefer the bigger one. This is why the handle's quite annoying. Um, and we want to do, is just rub over gently over the wall. If the sponge is new, what you'll find is you'll actually have to open the trowel up ever so slightly. Um, however, if it's an older sponge, uh, you can just have the sponge flat to the, uh, flat to the wall. Uh, what you'll find is the newer ones, they tend to push the water around a little bit on the wall, which is quite annoying. So now, if you've timed it right, if you look at the sponge float marks now, you should give just an ever so slight matte finish or matte look to it. If you've got lots of water on the surface of your sponge marks, you just want to leave it a little bit of time. Just leave it a couple of minutes, just let that initial water soak in. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sponge float the other walls off camera and then we'll come to spatting this down. So onto the spatting of these walls. Now as uh, mentioned in many of our videos, we're going to use the Rafina Comfort Grip Plastic Spatula, I think it's called. Uh, but the speed skim or anything like that will be fine. You could use a trowel. My honest opinion, why would you want to? But this is a metre long, it makes life an awful lot easier. But uh, what you're looking to try, the finish you're looking for here, is it should, when you rub your fingers over it, it should take the sponge marks out straight away. Um, if you've got water on the surface, 
too early to sponge it, uh, to spat it down. Just leave it for a little bit longer. Uh, this wall here is ready to go. Now, it should be fairly obvious, because as soon as you start to run the spatula over it, sponge marks should disappear. So if I go as close as I possibly can to the wall here for you, so what I'm going to do, hopefully you can see the sponge marks, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the speed tool over the top of it, and straight away, the sponge marks have gone. If that's happening, if that's happening with your sponge, you've got to hit it at just the right time. You get some that say that you look for five or ten minutes before you, uh, before you use a spatula or you, you take the sponge marks out. That is too long. It shouldn't be difficult for you to, it shouldn't be difficult for you to get rid of the sponge marks. But if you apply that principle of the plant needs to be greasy on the surface, but your fingers not digging in, and then the light haze at about a foot away shouldn't be leaving dimple marks. If you follow those two principles and then give that a light haze so you get an even film of water across the wall before you sponge it and then use that media, medium soft sponge then the sponge marks, then the sponge floating should be about the right time. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around and do all the other walls and then we'll come back to talk about the next stage. Okay, so at the point we're at now, uh, we've sponge floated the wall, so it's had the two coats flattened and now we sponge coated it, sponge floated it, uh, and then got rid of the sponge marks. Now, um, the wall is, it's still a little bit damp. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna run the trowel over it, just to clean up the corners and just really to compress the plaster a little bit. And it just, uh, makes doing that one wet trowel uh, a little bit easier. So what we're going to do is just clean the edges a little bit and then just just give the wall a light trowel over. You can see still a little bit of movement in the wall, in the plaster, sorry, especially now adding a bit of water, just where it's going up against the ceiling, just a little bit of a brush. You can just pull out any, any little holes that you might have in the ceiling, in the ceiling line. the plaster just while it's still got a little bit of moisture in it and then all we're going to do is we are just going to leave it to go right off pretty much so it's touch dry or just before you would do a second wet trowel uh, if you were not sponge floating it and then all we're going to do is we're going to do one wet trowel and then a dry pass with the plastic and then that will be it so we'll come back to it when we're at the point where we're going to do that wet trowel Okay, so we are now going to uh, do the one and only wet trowel um, on these walls. So at this point, the wall is completely uh, dry as it were, 
touch dry, it's not leaving any marks. So what we're going to do is do the wet trout. Now at this point you can switch over to a flexible trout if you want. I'm going to stick with my uh, 13 inch carbon which I've been uh, working in for the last couple of months. So. with plastic trout and that will be finished so we'll catch up when that's uh, happening. Okay so the final part to do on this set is just to do a quick pass over with the plastic trout. So it's just had the one wet trout left for 10-15 minutes and then we're just going to go over with the plastic trout. If you don't have one just your, your trout or the trout you're using just to go over it. And this is just really to give that nice, soft, silky finish. Okay, no water on the wall, just occasionally, just occasionally clean the, uh, clean the trowel. On this side. comes up on the camera. If I turn it around, saying two hours and 28 minutes. So this is the finish. So that's basically it. That's basically the process for using a sponge plate finish on a 2K system. Let's say it was running at around about two and a half hours, give or take. Um, and the finishes come out really nice. Um, let's say only one wet trowel and then a dry towel just to finish. So, what of sponge floating? The big questions is it better? Is it worse? Should you do it? Well, I suppose the most important question is, can you use it all the time? And the answer is no, you cannot. There are times where a set is so large that you physically can't get round fast enough. The key with sponge floating is that you have to be ahead at all times. Um, if after you've done your second coat, it's pulled into the point where you need to start doing a wet trowel, 
it is too late to sponge flow that. So on really large sets, or perhaps in the room you're plastering in is drying really quickly, you won't be able to get it on quick enough to be able to sponge flow that. So there are times where you cannot use it. That said though, um, does it make you a better plaster if you don't have to use sponge floating? Well, in my opinion, no, not at all. That said, does it make you a better plaster because you sponge float? No, not at all. The reality is it is just a method uh, to smoothen out the plaster, to get it flatter, uh, to put a little bit less stress on your body to get a decent finish. Yes, there are those the two coat don't need to use a sponge float at all and they get a beautiful finish and that's absolutely fine there's nothing wrong with that but the reality is for the DIYers those new into it or or even the experienced plasters that struggle with things like tiger marks or getting it flat or getting that beautiful mirror flat look flat sponge floating makes that an awful lot easier and that is the reality of it when appropriate to use, so namely when the set isn't so large or isn't pulling in really quickly, it just makes your life a bit easier. That said, if you don't want to use it, you can get a good finish. There's no problem with that. There's nothing wrong with this method. It, it, certainly in the plastering industry, it's almost looked down upon to use this method. But the reality is it's an awful lot less work. It's a lot less strain on your body and it gives a fantastic finish. If you're good at two coating without sponging, when they're both painted up together, they look exactly the same. The difference is for someone that is inexperienced or isn't that good at uh, plastering, this is just an easier way to get a higher standard. And as such, from time to time, we do use it. As mentioned on our other videos, it's not a, a go-to method that we use, but from time to time when it is appropriate, uh, we do use it to make our life a bit easier. So we hope this video really helps you understand the process for using sponge floating on a two coat method. Uh, the method is completely different for one coating and we will review that. But this just really gives you an idea as to the finish that you can get and possibly the reasons why you might consider uh, using it. We thank you so much uh, for watching the video. We hope you found it helpful. By all means, consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing if you find this content interesting. We thank you all those who have subscribed to the channel and we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks again.